When I had my first attempt at digging blight lug, I remember commenting at the time that if lugworms were a pound a piece, they'd be cheap. It's a back-breaking job. But these days, most blight lug are taken using a pump. In terms of physical demand, pumping may well be a whole lot easier. But technically, it also puts worm gathering onto another level. Or should I say, can put it onto another level, providing you have the setup and fine tuning right. Buying a worm pump is only part of the answer. Getting it to work to its fullest potential can be another matter. So who better to demonstrate how this can be achieved than a man who spends every available day on the beach gathering black log. Uh, a lot of people say to me these days when I'm out bait collecting, uh, how comes it looks so easy when you're doing it? I would say, well, let's have a look at your, your pump first. Anyway, as soon as you get hold of the pump, my God, you wouldn't be able to use it. Well, I'd say it's all down to the pumps, basically. It's nothing to do with technique. Uh, it's nothing to do with you can't get the bait. It's down to your equipment. If you were to buy a racing car and race in an old banger, you wouldn't win the race. So today was just a quick saying of all about different pumps and how to set it up. That is a standard Olvi two inch pump. Buy from any hood tattle shop, find them on Carbu, eBay. What I must stress when you're buying a pump is always to check out the spindle. It's nice and straight down there. Have a good look round the pump, check the handles are not loose. Make sure there's no dints in it because a lot of people once said, come to me and say look this pump's no good and then I'll have a good look and there'll be a big dint in it, you pull it back loses all the suction. That's just one pump. Now a lot of preferred bait collectors will go down for a smaller pump obviously your bigger pump's better to start off with. Your smaller pump all right and, you, and really when you really get used to what you're doing you can go down to the really narrow pump. Now the narrow pump you will miss a lot more bait with it and you'll probably cut a lot more because obviously it's the gauge you're trying to suck the worm in. The pump I prefer to learn and I learnt with was this. But before we learnt with the pump we used to dig with spades. The pumps come out late 1980s which was that was the first one then they moved on to the second one and then they moved on to the narrower gauge. Now how people say to me on the beach how do you set your pumps up? Well, it's not hard. A lot of people say, well, we'll use rubber washers and we'll use tennis balls with foam. And I've gone down, and I've, I've always used this now for going on 20 years. I use silicon. Vaseline in with your finger, a bit round. Silicon sealant in. As such, squeeze your silicon sealant in. Just tap it off, wet your finger and tap it off, and that's how it should look. Leave it for a day or two, and just push through, your silicon sealant comes out, and there's your, your, your plunger made. Obviously it might be longer, but you can cut it down with a knife, to such a size, or whatever size, but I wouldn't pretend we go over an inch, inch and a half. Reason being, you don't want to be pulling too much on your pump. How would you put an all? in your plunger, quite simple. Take your nut off your bar, push it back in and just keep pushing and pushing until it comes through on the crack. And there see it. Put your washer on, you put your silicon sealant on it with a rubber washer first. Then another rubber washer and then another rubber washer so that looks like a sandwich. So you've got a rubber washer, silicon sealant, two rubber washers. Now that should fit perfect in your pump. You put your nut back on. The reason being you need these rubber washers is when you tighten your nut up to get the plunger to work, if the washers weren't there, it would split your rubber sealant. Well, how do you make a rubber washer? Well, Lots of people can go and buy them, obviously, at tattle shops and, and on other good outlets of pumps. Uh, to me, I've always used an old rubber welly, which is simple. Just cut a piece of old rubber welly, and people say, well, how do you make a rubber welly into a washer? Quite simple. Use your pump. Put it down and just ease your pressure onto the pump until you know you're through. You lift it back, you push it off, and there is your rubber washer. All done. 
should be exact same size as your pump that will save you a lot of money I would prefer myself to have one rubber washer behind the silicon washer and two in front which is two the nearest end of the pump reason being is when you're pumping up that should be stopping the sand getting in between your pump and the silicon sealant that stops wear when you want to change it round your silicon sealant just take your old rubber washes off and put two new ones on you'll tend to find that your sealant won't wear your rubber washes will because what that actually does when you squeeze it together your rubber washes should stick out slightly bigger than your rubber sealant now when you go to set a pump up you always start from your, your nut end always have it slackened first you start off by putting your foot on you gently pull it up see there is no resistance there that's not right yet so you tighten your nut up some more just keep doing it a bit at a time pulling it up there you hear it more there it is so you turn it back round now this is what you're trying to achieve when you're out there bait collecting you get your pump set up it's running freely you've got plenty of suction on it now what you need to do then is to keep it lubricated people always used to say to me what would you use well years ago they all used to use very liquid and, and other things but I used to think well that's not very environmentally friendly that so I thought of a bit of vegetable oil works a treat all you need to do pop a little bit in don't go mad just a few drops back to your pump pull it up push it down creates a lovely lubrication every 15 to 20 pumps a little few drops of vegetable oil and I think that should do your treat. To me, the idea of going out, collecting your own bait is to come back safely. Coming back safely means you've got to take a few things into consideration when you're out on the beach, collecting your bait or angling for that matter. A lot of people once said to me that should I or should I go out in the dark? Well, it's not advisable for your first time first time is advisable always to go with somebody your fishing friend or somebody you know or somebody you might meet on the beach it doesn't really matter the matter is that you've got to be safe and you've got to get back now somebody said to me well how would you find your way off the beach in the dark if the fog come down I said well years ago we used to have to rely on compasses stuff like that but we've now got a remarkable little machine which a lot of boat people will know a lot of walkers will know which is a Garmin GPS these are quite simple to find you can go to Argos whatever 49 pound whatever eBay go where you want and when you buy it make sure you learn how to use it in the pocket switch it on where you go fog comes down any problem whatsoever you go back to that you're there it'll take you straight back to where you come from and don't forget now to always carry a spare set of batteries because if your battery goes on it it's no use to you and the other traditional old thing which has been out now for a few years well many a lot of years is a mobile phone for all the hard work and effort to be worth it knowing how to prepare and store your hard-earned bait is also crucial unless requested otherwise Eddie likes to roll his worms in either sawdust to sand before wrapping them well separated in newspaper ready for the deep freeze. And if they have to spend any time in the freezer they also need to be put into plastic bags with the air drawn out to prevent drying and freezer burn. If you can get them vacuum packed then so much the better. Current attention is also important out on the beach where they need to be gutted by squeezing the head then kept in a bucket riddled with holes to let any water or body juices escape. And just before leaving the beach, they should be washed thoroughly in clean seawater. Back at home, spread them out on newspaper in the garage and leave them to dry for an hour or two, then go into the wrapping process. With a bit of training, I eventually managed to get enough worms for this trip. Eddie and Jack on the other hand managed over 700. Evidence, if ever it was needed, that having the right equipment is key to success.